Okay, so today we're gonna to be covering how to deploy our Amplify Nux project as an SPA application using the Amplify CLI. So let's go ahead and jump into our terminal. And before we begin, I do wanna note that I am using Amplify CLI version 4.30.0. If you do need or want to upgrade, you can run npm upgrade hyphen g at aws hyphen amplify slash CLI. If you're running an older version, just know that some of the flow steps may vary slightly. Next up, the same way that we added authentication and our API in earlier lessons, we also wanna add hosting to our application. So let's run Amplify add hosting and this is going to walk us through a couple of steps option number one we're going to want to select hosting with amplify console and now next it's going to ask us which type of deployment we want we're going to run continuous deployments so that each time we commit to a certain branch a new deployment is going to go out automatically for us and from here it's going to kick us out to the aws console and it's going to give us a list of git providers or if you're not using a Git provider, you can deploy without Git provider here. I'm using GitHub to host my repository. So I'm gonna select GitHub here and let's go ahead and connect. So now if AWS does not have access to the Git provider account that you selected, you may have to run through an extra step of setting that access up. If you already have that access set up like I do, you'll be taken straight to this add repository branch page. From here, all we need to do is select the repository that we wanna connect, select the branch that we wanna run our build off of. I'm gonna leave mine as default and let's go ahead and select next. Now we need to configure our build. So a couple lessons ago, we set up a backend environment called dev. Let's go ahead and select that here. And then we're gonna to need to make one small change to our build and test settings. So go ahead and select edit. And it actually looks like something funky is going on here where I cannot edit this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out. We can edit this at a later step once we get this all set up. So that's no biggie there. And then a quick note that within advanced settings are your environment variables if you need to set any of those up. Everything else here should be correct though. So we can go ahead and click next. Next, we're gonna be asked to review our changes. Everything here looks correct. So let's go ahead and save and deploy. Now you may get a notification here from your Git provider that a new SSH key was added to your repository. Just want to note that that's normal. So now we've been taken to the deployment page for our application. It's from within here that we can access the URL for our application. And if we go ahead and select that, we should get a boilerplate page saying, hey, we're deploying your application, come back here in a second. And um, we can click into our deployment so that we can actually see what's going on. So we can see the provisioning, the building, any tests that might have run, whether or not the deployment succeeded. Okay, great. So our build and deployment succeeded and AWS was able to verify that deployment went out. However, if we look at the verification, that does not quite look right. So let's go ahead and dive into our domain and yeah, we get an access denied message. So the reason why this is happening in our case is because the deployment's looking for the resources in the wrong folder. Uh, that's what I was trying to change in the previous step, but was running into some issues. So we want to go into build settings here and we want to adjust this amplify.yaml slightly. So let's go and edit this. And under front end artifacts base directory, we want to change it from just a slash to slash dist slash. While we're here, it's also worth checking to make sure that your build command is npm run build instead of npm run generate. Uh, since we're dealing with dynamic routing with our posts, we need to use npm run build so that we can support that dynamic routing whereas npm run generate will not support that. So let's go ahead and save this and we can see that it's successfully updated. So let's go back to our application. Let's dive into that previous build and let's redeploy this version. Okay, so now that our application has deployed with our build setting change, let's go ahead and check out our application now. And okay, great. Looks like everything went great that time. One thing you will immediately notice is that our application is using all of the same information and data that we have locally. So this is the local application this is the production application. Nothing changed, all of the data is the same. And I can even log in as the same user. And now chances are you're probably not gonna want that for your production build. So in the next lesson, we're gonna go over how to set up a production environment and then deploy that as your production application. 